Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm Ashika and if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do so. You can also follow me on Instagram at Absolutely Ashika. Today we're in the lovely town of Windsor and we're actually going to see the castle of the Queen. Not sure if you've already seen it yet or not, but if you haven't, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to check it out along with us. The Windsor Castle is easily accessible from London and takes approximately an hour by train. There's also plenty of buses to pick from, which allow you the scenic route on the way to Windsor. Both the trains and the buses stop right in front of the palace, which means opting for public transport is probably a good idea. The castle can get crowded during the day, but since we visited late in the afternoon, there were pretty much no queues. Often dubbed as the Queen's Weekend Castle, Windsor Castle is the oldest and the largest occupied castle in the world. The Windsor Castle is open to the public and can be visited through the week except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Tickets can either be bought online or directly at the castle. We bought ours at the castle as our plan was honestly very last minute. After purchasing our tickets at 23.50 each, there was a quick security check, a stop to pick up our headphones to enjoy the guided tour, and we were ready to start. Since Windsor Castle is a working royal palace, it is often used for ceremonial and state occasions, including official visits from overseas heads of state. The state banquet at St. George's Hall is a sight to behold when a table seating 160 guests is decorated with porcelain and silver gilt from the royal collection. Windsor Castle has welcomed visitors for hundreds of years. Nearly one and a half million people visit the castle every single year to immerse themselves in the castle's rich history and great works of art from the royal collection. Something interesting about the Windsor Palace is that it has a 2.65 miles approach road. Used earlier for deer hunting, the 240 feet wide road leads all the way up to the castle. Legend has it that this is where Henry VIII waited while his wife Anne Boleyn was being executed. Rumour also has it that Queen Elizabeth II often slept in the dungeon of the castle during World War II. It is also said that Hitler never bombed the Windsor Castle during the war, as he wanted to make it his home. The royal family took advantage of it to hide out there during the war. I definitely recommend witnessing the change of guard, which takes place at 11am on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. We started off our tour at St. George's Chapel, as it was due to close at 4pm. The palace, on the other hand, closes at 5.15pm. St. George holds a special place in the heart of the English, being the patron saint of England. St. George's Chapel is often frequented by the Queen and the royal family, as well as the local community. This chapel was also where the marriage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle took place and is the burial place of 10 monarchs, including Henry VIII and Charles I, and is one of the finest examples of Gothic architecture in England. Built in the perpendicular Gothic style, work on the present chapel began when Edward IV was king in 1475, but it took until 1528 for the entire chapel to be finally completed. The chapel is the spiritual home of the Order of the Garter, one of the oldest and most important orders in the world, founded by Edward III in 1348. The most noble Order of the Garter, the English Order of Knighthood, is ranked as the highest British civil and military honour obtainable. So we're about to head into St. George's Chapel and camera's not allowed inside, but I hope, I hope it's very exciting. The Windsor Castle has been a royal home for over 900 years and is today a working palace. 
The first construction began in 1070 by William the Conqueror, and it took 16 years for the castle to be complete. From then on, many have added to its glory to help it take the shape it holds today. It also houses the state apartments, the Queen's Dollhouse, the Drawings Gallery, and St. George's Chapel. Whilst on the tour, the audio guidebook will tell you of the rich history of the palace, the rooms where the Queen hosts her guests, including heads of state, the history behind the artifacts and paintings adorning the walls and ceilings, and the purpose of each room. In 1992, a fire broke out, starting in the Queen's private chapel, thanks to a faulty spotlight, quickly spreading to other rooms. It went on to burn for 15 hours and destroying 115 rooms, including nine state rooms. The restoration then took five years to complete. If you'd like to pick up souvenirs, you'll find gift shops within the castle. And if it's tea and cake you fancy, do visit the Undercroft Cafe within the castle. Once we were done with the castle tour, we quickly stepped outside to explore the bustling streets where we found everything from souvenirs to cafes and pubs brimming with tourists. With plenty of options to choose from between the Windsor Castle, Legoland or Eton College, or for those who are looking to just enjoy the Thames, Windsor has much to offer. So that's it. Unfortunately, we can't show you the inside of the palace as photography is not permitted. But I hope you liked what you saw today. In case you haven't subscribed to my channel, my name is Ashika. You can also find me on Instagram at Absolutely Ashika. Hit the subscribe button, follow me on Instagram. And if you feel this video helped you, please give me a like or a share. Thanks for watching and have a great week.